And welcome to the stage, Emily Yarathan. I think it's really commendable that some people live like no regrets. <laughs> um, I'm not one of those people. I truly 100% fully believe in regrets. Um, whether it's that time I tried to be goth or getting bangs and then getting them over and over and over again. I've done a lot of regrettable things. Um, however, my biggest regret was when I was seven years old, and it was a crash course in how to be a decent human being. Buckle up. <laughs> so my sister and I were very, like, freakishly independent children. My mom says that when we were in preschool, we, we used to run away from her as soon as she dropped us off, um, which I think for, like, three-year-olds is not normal. Uh, and my great aunt used to say that I had, like, Emily never met a stranger. And because I would talk to anybody without fear or a filter. And one of the, uh, one of the things that my sister did when she was seven was she went to Girl Scout camp for a week, sleepaway camp. And my mom, my mom loves to tell the story that she was in the car reading the pamphlet and she's like, mom, what's homesickness? And my mom says, well, honey, it's when sometimes you miss your family or your house. And my sister's like, why would I miss you? <laughs> so <laughs> my attitude was pretty much identical, which meant that when I turned seven, the next summer, I went to Girl Scout camp. Um, for a whole week by myself. Uh, and I had been to a bunch of sleepovers. None of them had been in the wilderness. Uh, my dad was an army ranger in the Vietnam War, so he's like good on camping. He was good. We, had, we didn't do that, yeah. It's all <laughs> had his fill. Uh, so when I get there, I'm like excited, but I'm completely overloaded by what I'm faced with. There's Kool-Aid at every meal, cool, love camp. Wait a minute, this building that I'm sleeping in doesn't, these walls are vinyl. That's not a wall, <laughs> it's tarp. And what's a latrine? It's, there's a commute to the latrine. <laughs> okay, and it's, it, that's a hole, that's not a, all right, cool. Um, what's, a wolf spider, and why does it look like a tarantula, and why is it near me? <laughs> so I didn't really handle it well. Um, the first thing that happened in this, <laughs> this week of errors was I got a gnat in my ear, um, and that I super didn't handle well. The counselors were pretty unsympathetic. Uh, and just the first bout of crocodile tears. And then I remember that next night, I'm in my bed in the platform tent, and in the rafters, I see in the darkness a shadowy figure. It's probably a raccoon, but I stared at it the whole night. <laughs> Just frozen in fear. And while I was there, I was also getting bullied because I was the only seven-year-old in the whole camp. Nobody else's parents were like, seven, first grade, enough education to send them out. <laughs> so my bunk mates, I had three bunk mates, two of them were best friends, and they were eight. <laughs> so they bullied me. And then there was Kelly, and Kelly was nine. And she was the oldest girl in my cabin area, which meant she was similarly outcast. And she was so nice to me. And she was my partner activities. And I just was so grateful for her. But even with her reassurance, I'm not having any fun. Well, I probably did, but I don't remember it that way. 
And I'm, I guess it's so bad, like, I'm crying so much that my counselors decide that it's okay for me to have a meeting with my sister, which is against protocol. She is in another part of the camp, so our meeting had to be clandestine. <laughs> and I remember being led to a clearing and <laughs> she and her counselor at her cool horseback riding camp crested the hill in a golf cart to the rendezvous point. And I see her, she walks toward me and I am overcome with emotion and I start crying again. And she gives me an annoyed shrug. <laughs> and I think she maybe awkwardly like patted my shoulder. Um, in her defense, this has literally never happened before. Uh, and also, side note, kind of uh, foreshadowing into how she handles other people's emotions to this day. Um, <laughs> and so the comfort meeting didn't go well. It was a bust. Uh, and, you know, we're just, we're powering through the rest of the week. My counselors have probably just had enough of me, although I was very cute and had a really just lovely bowl cut, so. Um, it gets to the last night and I'm finally like, I'm ready to go home and I, the only positive thing in this camp is that like Kelly in my bunk has just really been there for me. And I, I wake up in the morning to the whispers of the bullies. And they are saying, oh my God, did Kelly be on the floor? And I look, there is an unmistakable puddle of urine next to Kelly's bed. And she starts to wake up. These girls are laughing at her. She doesn't know what's happening. And she looks at me with pleading eyes, and this is my moment, right, to pay back all of the empathy and kindness that she's shown me. And I said, ew, Kelly, did you be on the floor? <laughs> and I have this distinct memory of the counselors being in there cleaning it up and being like, Kelly, like, what happened? And Kelly's like, I don't know, she's so confused. She doesn't remember it happening, and she's a nine-year-old who just peed on the floor at camp. It's humiliating, and there's a reason she doesn't remember doing it. <laughs> I peed on the floor. <laughs> so the commute to the latrine, um, The protocol was to wake a bunkmate, and they, you both went, um, I don't know, seven miles to the toilet, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, I'm not talking to the bullies, like, I'm not gonna wake them up. So I go over to Kelly, and my pathetic whisper is of like, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> they don't wake her up obviously. And you know when it happens and you just... <laughs> and I was frozen and I just peed on the floor right next to her bed. So I threw my underwear at the bottom of my bag and I got back in my bunk and then here we are and Kelly is taking the blame I know. Uh, so, I'm really sorry, Kelly. <laughs> I really hope there's not a 34-year-old woman out there with Girl Scout camp-associated trauma. <laughs> I failed you. But it's not really a surprise that I failed because learning how to be an independent, kind, and truthful human being is not a crash course. It's a PhD 
and I haven't started my dissertation. 